Hey everybody, Marcus here. One of the things I use most commonly in our Cybertruck are the outlets. Power share on the Cybertruck is basically taking this gigantic power bank that we have here, 123 kilowatts, and making it usable beyond driving, which is something that Tesla hasn't done before. I thought it'd be a good video to go over uh, basically all the capabilities of the Cybertruck's power share, whether that's the bed outlets here, the cabin outlets, or even using the charge port to hook up to your house. Keep on watching. So let's start out with the basics. We have a NEMA 1450 outlet here in the bed. That's 40 amps at 240 volts. Most commonly, you'd probably use this if you were charging another electric car or if you have some big power tools that require 240 volts. We also have two NEMA 520 receptacles there. Those are gonna be 20 amps at 120 volts. We have an additional two 520 outlets in the cabin, one in the center console and then another in the back row under the screen. In addition to that, there are three USB-C plugs within the cabin two in the back row, and then one in that center console storage area. Now looking at these outlets in the bed here, some additional kind of caveats to the power output for them. The bottom one here, the 40 amp capable 1450 outlet, you're likely going to use to maybe charge another electric car. Now if you're doing that and you're using the mobile connector like we have, um, you're going to plug that in and it's going to do 32 amps continuously at 240 volts. There is going to be a little bit of voltage drop, so it'll actually be under 240, closer to like 235 or so. Um, but that's going to be roughly 7.5 kilowatt hours. Now the truck itself, between all the outlets, both the 240, the 120s, and the 120s that are in the cabin there, um, it can total output 9.6 kilowatt. So that means if you're charging an electric car at the full 32 amps at 240, that's about seven and a half kilowatt. You have an additional two kilowatt or so, or about 15 amps or so on those 120 volt plugs. All right, so let's take a look at the cabin outlets. We'll start in the front here. Uh, basically, in the center console area there, we have both a NEMA 520, the 120 volts, 20 amps, and we also have a USB-C there on the right. So let's get the USB-C plugged in. I'm going to use my anchor power bank here that can take up to 140 watts to show you how strong these USB-C uh, ports go, or how strong they are. So it looks like they're outputting 42 watts. That's probably not enough to charge something like a laptop, but thankfully with this, you can charge and discharge at the same time. So if we did need to do that, you can just run another USB-C from the power bank to the laptop and it'll output the necessary um, wattage for that. But the nice thing is also having the 120 volt outlet there. So we can actually plug in the laptop charger uh, and see how that'll work. Now, thankfully, Tesla has thought about this and they actually put this outlet in with the ground facing over to the right there. So if you're using something like a big uh, charger brick for a laptop, you don't have to worry about clearance issues. So you are going to have to go in and turn the outlets on via the outlets and mods section, but you can see here that that 96 watt brick for charging my laptop is pulling the full 94.9 or so um, from that outlet in the center console there. So that is working great. All right, so now let's check out the back row and the power here. You can see I have wired up my Starlink Mini uh, and that's on a glass suction cup mount there. So that just kind of travels with me everywhere now. Now I did buy a cable from Amazon and I can link the mount and the cable down below, but basically it takes the DC power that the Starlink needs and then converts it to a USB-C so we can just plug it in back here. Now back here we have two USB-C ports. Uh, I have the Starlink plugged into one and I have a wireless charger 
that I run up there plugged into the other. There is a little pass through in the center console that you could run it that way, but uh, just not really a clean way to run it into the console without kind of having the wire hanging everywhere. So I just use a uh, cable to the back here with an elbow on it. Now we also have a 120 volt outlet there, the 520, or yeah, 520. It's kind of hard to see, and to be totally honest, it's nearly impossible to get anything plugged into it on the first try. This light here blinds you when you look down, so it's hard to see this, but uh, let's get the laptop charger here plugged in and see how it does. All right, so we have the power bank plugged into the 120 volt uh, outlet here, and you can see we're pulling that same 94.9 watts. So of course the uh, power bank here isn't gonna test the limits of the outlets in here, but just showing that um, perfectly capable you know, we could run the Starlink using the um, power adapter that it comes with and use the 120 volt also if we needed, um, you know, USB-C plugs to maybe charge our daughter's tablet or something on the road. So just gives you a little bit of versatility here having both the USB-C and the 120 volt outlet in the cabin. Now I have gone ahead and wired uh, or plugged in the power bank to the USB-C port that's under here and interesting to note that the back USB-C ports are putting out 63.3 watts compared to the 42 watts or so that the front uh, USB-C port was. So a little bit more power. I honestly think that might be enough to charge my laptop. So that's cool to see they're a little bit higher output in the back here. Now just to show you how capable these outlets are here, I have the hair dryer and the air fryer here, and let's get those going. Get that going at full blast. And then we'll also turn on the hair dryer here. And that is at uh, full heat on that one too. So let's see what the truck says in terms of power output. Currently right now we're drawing 2.9 kilowatt hours. So it seems like for a little bit at least it will let you do more than 20 amps continuous on that. Now I'm going to plug the car in in a little bit here and let's see how that does with that. Now one thing I should note is that Tesla says that for the bed outlet circuit for the 120 that 20 amps is the max um, continuously and that the cabin outlets is also 20 amps. So you can run both of those at 40 amps uh, and still be just fine. You can't put more than 20 amps on either of those continuously, even though it seems like it will draw a little bit more, uh, at least for a short time without complaining. Now, plugging the car in, I'm actually going to have to plug one of these into the cabin because the shape of the outlet here does not let us plug the mobile connector in there. So let's get this all set up. Okay, so you can see after turning on the air fryer and the hair dryer and then plugging the car in to charge, we have exceeded that 9.6 kilowatt hours and are getting a outlets unavailable. Unplug any devices and reset outlets to restore. So you can go into your menu here and we'll hit reset. And looks like the air fryer and the uh, hair dryer have turned back on. Interesting, I came over here to see if the car was charging and it actually was. Uh, and as I was walking over here, basically the whole thing turned off again. So let's unplug the air fryer. We'll give it a little bit of breathing room here and go reset those outlets again. All right, so we're getting that same error message. We'll hit reset here. And the hair dryer turned back on. And let's see how long it takes for the car to start charging again. Looks like that's pretty quickly ramping up there. Uh, 
and we are at a 8.4 kilowatt. So that would be the hairdryer running and then the car charging at the same time. So we do have a bit of voltage drop here running everything. Just charging the car alone, we're getting 32 amps at 226 or 227 volts. Um, I also turned on the air fryer and you can see that uh, in the screenshot here and that lowered it down to about 223 volts. So there is a bit of voltage drop, I guess, running the inverter um, on the truck and powering everything out of it, but still getting, uh, you know, at 230, I think that's roughly like 7.4 or so, 7.3 uh, kilowatt charging the Model Y here. So you can see here running everything at once obviously is going to overload the system uh, and it will reset those outlets or require a reset. So, you know, using the 240 at seven and a half kilowatts and then another kilowatt and a half or so for the hairdryer or the air fryer is going to be pretty much all you can do in terms of high power devices. Now you could always plug in like the laptop charger or something else that's only drawing 100 watts and get closer to that 9.6 kilowatt output. So I think that realistically here, if you're at a campsite, it's gonna be normal to you know run an air fryer or an electric griddle or something like that that's just gonna draw like a kilowatt or kilowatt and a half uh, or so. So I mean that, uh, in addition to powering like Starlink in the cab um, or you know powering a power bank or charging your laptop phone whatever else you might have hooked up Cybertruck's perfectly capable of that you know I think once you get into the kind of higher power continuous um, de devices or whatever you want to call it like charging a vehicle you are going to have to be a little bit more careful just because you are going to get to that 9.6 kilowatt um, output limit but I don't really see that being all that you know common if we're charging the car, I'm probably gonna be mindful of our power output, so I'm not going to hit that limit that often. And to be totally honest, when we're camping, what we're doing and we're drawing the most is cooking, you know, either the air fryer or the griddle. Uh, and then we have um, basically the outlets hooked up here to run into the tent to charge our devices. So that's, you know, maybe a hundred watts, if that. Now you may have seen in my previous videos that there is the 120 volt outlet adapter that Tesla has made utilizing the mobile connector. And that lets you use power share from the charge port. That's the secret sauce of the Cybertruck. You're not only limited to the bed outlets there, but you also have the charge port that you can use. Now, like I said in the previous video, if you're an all-wheel drive owner or a cyber beast owner and you get this uh, outlet adapter you're probably going to be disappointed the limitation is that you can only use either the charge port power uh, at one time or the bed outlets or cabin outlets you can't use them both at the same time so when you're using the charge port adapter here you're limited basically to the 20 amps at 120 that this provides roughly uh, 2,400 watts. You can't use any of the bed outlets or anything else, so you're stuck with that. So if you are a long range owner who doesn't have bed outlets, this is gonna be fantastic for you. But if you're an all wheel drive owner or a uh, cyber beast owner, this is gonna be pretty much useless. Now, as of filming uh, August 1st of 2025 here, you can see we have power walls. And unfortunately, Powerwall owners or Powerwall and solar owners are not able to use PowerShare on the truck at this point. We've been promised an update uh, sometime later in 2025, so hopefully that comes along here soon. But as of right now, with Powerwalls, uh, we cannot hook this up. Now, once it is activated, because we have Powerwalls, all we have to have is a wall connector. So we have the universal wall connector here. Um, we also have a Gen 2 wall connector that I'm gonna try out once that's activated. But according to Tesla, that's all we need. We just plug that in and the truck will be able to output continuously 11 and a half kilowatt of power, I believe, to back up the house. Now that should be plenty 
if we're in a power outage. Now with the power walls, we have 40 kilowatt hours of storage already. So I can't really think of a time when we've had a power outage that's been long enough that we've used all of the 40 kilowatt hours of storage on the power walls overnight and then still had a power outage in the morning and didn't have sun to recharge the power walls. The benefit of the solar and power walls is basically even with a power outage, you can just keep on refilling the power walls um, you know, with solar throughout the day so you can go on you know, infinitely, essentially, um, as long as there's sun. So I don't know how useful it's going to be to utilize the truck here for power share with the power walls. What it does add is 120 kilowatt hours or so of additional storage um, during an outage, which would be nice. I think what will be handy basically during a power outage is that with power walls and the everything else in the solar, essentially you run into the opposite problem of what everybody would think. You'd think with a power outage, oh, I'm not gonna be able to charge my car. Usually what happens with us is we have power outages when it's super bright outside. And if our power walls are full, we end up having to turn them. Essentially the solar gets turned off because there's nowhere to send the excess electricity that usually goes back to the grid. So having the truck and the Model Y here, we can basically plug those in and utilize charge on solar so we can take all that solar that otherwise would have just been wasted and put it into our vehicles. So that's the usefulness of having kind of this whole setup. I don't think that utilizing the truck during an outage, unless it's a really bad outage or it's really bad storms continuously, which we really don't get here in Northern California, unless there was like some sort of really bad fire maybe um, that kept us from you know, seeing the sun for an extended period of time and we didn't have power. That might be about the only usefulness of it. But like I said, as of uh, August 1st here in 2025, we're still waiting for that update. And as soon as we get it, I'm definitely going to film a video and, you know, hopefully try it out. I think because it's only utilized during um, power outages and not for like arbitrage, uh, it's just not going to get used that much. But I'll go over that in a little more detail once we get that uh, functionality later this year. Crossing our fingers on that one. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video here about PowerShare on the Cybertruck. Like I said, once we get the capabilities with the power walls in the house, I'll definitely update you and do a video for that. If you have any questions or comments about the uh, video here, let me know down in the comments. As always, like and subscribe. And if you need a referral code, check down below in the description for mine. Keep on watching.